Now, there's, when you're doing um, puppetry, there's 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 the puppets themselves, and mm -hmm. then there's the camera's motion. Mm -hmm. and you could open up here to to, uh, to see this setup here. Um, I mean, this camera. Can we talk about how it's rigged and how you, you do move, movement on it? Yeah, uh, I mean, this is an old rig. This was originally built to uh, hold a big, heavy Mitchell cameras that had 35 millimeter strips of film in them. Um, and this has every axis of movement. So, in, you've seen movies where there's a, a crane shot where you move from above and you move below and stuff. Just imagine this is a live action set in miniature. Mm -hmm. So, the camera has to be capable of doing any movement that a regular camera with a cameraman on a crane or pushed on a little cart, anything that a camera could do on a real movie set, a live action movie set, this, this motion control rig can do it too. And so, they'll take this rig. And then they can put it on the set here. And there can be characters who will be walking down the stairs and then walking towards the front door. And they can pan along with them as the animator manipulates the puppet, taking a little movement. It'll take a single frame of film, move back a little, then move the foot further along and take a single frame of film. And this film is set up so it also takes two frames that make the stereo image, mm -hmm. so you can see it in 3D. Um, so basically, it just reproduces exactly what you would have on a live action set except we do it one frame at a time. <laughs> okay, we can go in, squeeze, squeeze in again. Um, how do you direct 28 different animators at the same time? <laughs> with great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the animation crew has been incredible to work with. And we were just saying how international the whole crew, of, the whole animation team is. It's, I feel like every country is represented in our, in our crew. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been very interesting to with stop motion. You kind of only get one shot, one one take at that shot. So there's a lot of discussion that goes in into the performance that the animator does. Uh, they usually do like one rough pass of it. We'll take a good look at it, discuss all the nuance and things that we want to tweak, and then it's kind of they go out to the set and they they do that performance that is going to be the, the final piece in the film. Yeah, and it's, you know, I mean, it's true, the old cliche that 90% of directing is casting. So we cast Sir Ben to, to play Archibald Snatcher, the villain of the movie, um, who's this fantastic puppet, just the most elaborate puppet ever built. Um, but we also cast the animators who animate him. So there's different sequences mm -hmm. where Snatcher is doing a particular type of thing. There's an action scene where he's fighting the hero. Uh, there's other scenes where he has to move in a different way. There's a dance sequence, per se. And there's animators that we know, you know, any one of our animators could do those sequences, but there's some who are particularly attuned to doing that sequence. So we cast them to the moment, too. Is who is this best at doing, you know, Snatcher during the dance sequence and during the fight sequence. So it's, it's casting just like you would actors. Mm -hmm. If you do a dance sequence with more than two dancers, with an, with an audience, in the, well, with other puppet, uh, puppets, one guy or one woman is just doing the whole thing, yes. shot yeah. for shot? It's yep. possible, and we occasionally do it, that okay. more than one animator will be on a set in one shot, but pretty rarely. Usually the, there's one animator would be manipulating all the practical or real puppets that are dancing on that set. It's just easier for him to keep it, for one person to keep it in their head. Yeah. And how did you gentlemen get into this business? How did you get into become animators? <laughs> wow. Uh, I just always drew uh, as a kid, very much into cartoons, comic books, and everything. And uh, I ended up at Sheridan College in Toronto, Canada. Uh, and uh, yeah, I knew right away that that was, that's what I wanted to do. I loved I loved film, and I loved comic books and cartoons. And animation was that perfect melding of the two. And uh, yeah, I went to Sheridan College and ended up uh, storyboarding on Coraline and uh, Paranorman here at Leica. So yeah, I feel like I'm in I'm in exactly the spot I wanted to be in. <laughs> what about you? Very similar how I ended up in animation. How I ended up directing is I wasn't as good at doing the other stuff as all the other people <laughs> who were doing those jobs. So by default, I became the director. It's kind of like ending up being the goalie in hockey. I couldn't skate or animate as good as the other guys, so they said, all right, you're the director. 